Here we are with some simple code for the CH32V003, basically just blinking and counting the blinks. And we can upload it uh, fine just by pressing the normal upload. The uh, LED should start to blink. And if we go to serial monitor, hopefully we'll be able to see some blinking action. There we go. So it says blink. It's a bit frantic, but it tells us uh, the number of blinks. That's that's great. Now, if we say, okay, we want to slow that down, so we're just doing our normal development, and we'll just put a one in front of both of those, and we go to upload again, it will complain. Now, we've seen this before, and we also know that how to unbrick this, so I'll link up to that video. All you just need to do is to run the mini, uh, the mini CH link program with the U option, pull the power out, and then at the same time as running the code, you put the power back in, blinking stops, it's completely um, fine now. So you can change that code and it'll run and the blinking will be slower and the serial monitor will be slower. Let me just clear that. There we go. So that works fine, but it's mm, it's unwieldy that you have to run uh, mini CH link if you want to unbrick your device. And the problem is, that uh, what's happening is that the uh, the CH32V003 has some shared pins because it's only, this one anyway, is only in SOP8 format uh, or form factor. You have SWIO, which is where your programming line is coming in, but also UTX, which is your serial transmission. And the other pin involved in serial um, communication is URX over here at pin number one. So what can we do about that? Uh, if we were to do more development, we'd probably need to um, have something which is not as kludgy as unbricking every time that we want to do a new upload or a new firmware update. One of the silly ways around it, but it does work, is to take our serial begin out of the setup function and we put it into our loop. So if we put it around about here before we want to print, Maybe a little delay might be useful. Let's say, uh, let's say 80 milliseconds, and at the end of the print, we have a similar delay. And then we finish the whole thing up with a serial end. And so, what we're doing really is we're just turning on that communication for the time that we want to do it. So, uh, one thing which I'd forgotten to uh, check looking back over the video was the actual upload with the serial begin and end inside the loop. Uh, so we will do that now. Um, so if I change the delay to something like 80 and maybe 500, that should speed things up a little bit. First thing I'm interested in is will it load up? So let's have a look at that. Yeah, looks like it's loaded up and the flashing is a lot faster. And the second thing is, what are we getting out of the serial monitor? Yeah, and we can see there that the uh, the blinking is fine as well. So um, that seems like a kludgy, bodgy way to do it. But if you're only um, if you're only doing a little bit of quick development on your firmware, then that's possibly a way around it without what we're about to go into. Uh, so I will take this away now put it back where it belongs. We don't probably need the delay there. I mean, maybe we do. Uh, and we'll take this away as well. There we go. So this is back to what it probably should be. There is um, another three ways that I've been looking at to, to get this done. Um, one is that you download and install the official software. So it's called Moon River Studio. And as what it's got there is this ability to enable SDI printf. And so your uh, communication, your serial communication, if you like, comes out of that one wire. And people have reported online that that works fine. I haven't been able to get it to work. Uh, possibly something to do with being a Linux person when it seems to be all Windows-based advice. Um, but that would be one possibility uh, is, to, is to do that. You could also uh, swap from the 8-pin version to the 20-pin version because there is not that clash of pins with the 20-pin version. And we're just talking about double the price, so from $0.10 cents to $0.20, cents. So plus you get a few extra pins from 8 pins to 20 pins. So might be a more sensible option. Um, and then what we want to do is 
remap those pins. And so to do that, um, I actually had to uh, look at a lot of files. If I go into the Arduino area here, so let's Arduino 1.5, uh, and I think packages and WCH, and I just do a count of how many files are in there. So if we do find and we throw it past word count, and check the lines yeah 4701 files in there but you can um, look at specifically something like pd5 so see if i've still got there yeah there we go i'll just make this a little larger so we can all see so here's just searching all of those files for specifically the um the idea that uh, that that file has in it pd5 which is the problem uh, if we go back to our uh, pins here, while that's searching, uh, this is PD5 here, which is operating as UTX, but also as PD1 and SWIO. So um, if I look at this now, I'll make this a little larger again. These are the files that are possibly things that we can alter in order to get this to go. And so uh, if I dive into that, we go to Arduino and packages, and we get to... so. So within this directory are all of those files. Now, um, just strap yourself in here and we'll go deep. So hardware and then CH32V, then 1.04, down into variants, down into uh, the actual variant that we're looking at, and then dive right down to here. And these are the two files, this one and this one. So peripheralpins.c and variant underscore ch32v003f4.h that rolls off the tongue doesn't it uh, and so all we need to do is to modify a couple of things in there starting with peripheral pins if we just go down to where uart is defined uh, here it is here and we have the tx pin as being pd5 but we want the tx pin to be pd6 and the rx pin is currently defined as pd6 we want that to be pc1 note the underscore here and we will save that and then if we go to the variant dot uh, h file and scroll down also to find this the uart pins here they are so serial rx is currently pd6 uh, so we want that to be pc1 note the lack of underscore so it's pc1 and our tx we want to be pd6 alternate mapping and so we'll save that so that's what needs to be done with the config files and then what we need to do let's get rid of all of this what we need to do uh, in our actual setup is these two lines here so these have come from a um well there was a, a website done uh by a guy in Thailand, and he has um, he had this whole way of swapping PD6 for PD5, which is not exactly what I wanted to do, but um, that code that he wrote sort of inspired um, these two lines here to be put in setup. And uh, and then what should happen now is that uh, not only should it upload, but those, that pin remapping should be done. So let's check the uploading first, um, see if it's compiling and uploading. And the answer is yes. We probably should change these timings, actually. So let's change the timings uh, so that we... Let's make this a nice big delay, 1500, and so that we can see that working. Yep. So in other words, we can just keep going and changing the firmware, and there's no cost there. One thing which you will notice, though, that even though it's, uh, it's doing the blinking and everything is fine, um, we're not getting any anything on the serial monitor i'll just cancel the previous stuff there so there's nothing happening on here so that's a bit of a gotcha because what we've actually done is we have changed these pins so if i swap these around now so i want my tx and rx to be let's take this out here here we go hopefully you can see this so i want tx now to be on pd um six so that's the uh, yellow wire here and i want my rx to be on 
uh, PD, uh, PC1, which is pin 5, and that is the green wire there. So now you can see on the uh, serial monitor here, we're actually getting some serial communication. So uh, let's make it a bit more frantic. Let's go to 80 and maybe 300, and we'll do both the upload. And yep, so the upload's fine, and here's a serial monitor. And you can see that it's quite frantically counting the blinks. So, yeah, look, choose your own adventure here. Whether you just um, use mini ECH link uh, with the U option to unbrick it uh, when you are trying to reprogram your firmware and there's serial communication going on. Um, you could do what I did with a bit of a bodge in here by putting your serial begin and your serial end only opening up when you need it. Not ideal, but doable. Um, you could try going down the path of Moon River Studio. Moon River. And that might um, help you uh, because uh, you could get your serial communication or your debugging via that one wire, if you can work that out. You could just buy a, um, a, a, a version of this chip that has more pins, which is probably you know pretty logical if you need those pins. Um, but this one here has been an interesting deep, deep dive into remapping of the UART pins, and it works, which is good. And so if you do have a lot of these uh, SOP8 chips hanging around and you're thinking, oh, no, um, I do want to do serial communication and keep reprogramming it, um, then hopefully this video has been useful for you. That is the video. That is the video. That is the circuit and the video for this week. Uh, I've enjoyed your company. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.